This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you've got car questions, we've got car answers, and we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR, or... You can text your questions at 411923. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we've always got some tips and tricks for taking care of your car and open phones and texts and deferred maintenance and repair. Matt, I think about that. People come to the shop and, you know, you change the oil on their car and maybe you rotate their tires and you say, oh, by the way, you're going to need this and you're going to need that and you're going to need the other. And they say, okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. But, you know, no, I'm not going to do anything with that. We don't really have that experience so much at our shop, but I know that's an experience that's common in a lot of shops. And so some people say, no, 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 no. And then their car hits 100,000 miles and something breaks. And <laughs> no, they go, no, what's really funny, Dave, is they've said no, 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 no for 100,000 miles. And then they come in and it's got 110,000 or something. You say, oh, my goodness. You know, gosh, this thing has got, you know, the ball joints are worn out. I mean, like talking about Suburban, because that's a classic yeah. Suburban, you know what I mean, or Tahoe or something. Ball joints are worn out, tie rod ends loose, there's, a, you know, the rear main seal's leaking from that plate. How is that possible? I've never done anything to this car. I said, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like I joke with my guys at work. They put something in the microwave and they take a sip of the soup and they go, ah, oh, God, that's hot. I said, well, yeah. Yeah, you just took it out of the microwave for four minutes, moron. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I shouldn't little... say moron, but, but it's like, oh, I've driven my car 150,000 miles. I've never done anything. Now, suddenly it needs work. It's been perfect <laughs> all this time. <laughs> Deferred maintenance and repair. And when you look at them and when you happen to be the shop that is the bearer of the bad news, because they didn't hear all the other things along the way. Nah, that's all right. Nah, that's all right. I'll, I'll get that later. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, yeah, you know. And now you got to call them up and you go, hey, man, his, you know, maybe it's the first time you've seen the car and you look at it and it is like hanging by a thread because everything has been completely ignored. And, uh, you know, and that's the thing about the modern car. You can just put gas and go and they'll go a long time. But at some point you got to pay the piper. <laughs> <laughs> and all those repairs show up. So whether you may, if you're just going to trade the car off at a hundred thousand, don't do anything but change the oil. Maybe put some brakes on it. You know, because at that point, it's the next person's problem. Yeah, well, that's why I say, like in a lease case, just maintain it to the to the minimum required standards. But unfortunately, even on the modern cars that maybe you're going to trade off at 100,000 miles, maybe they have a major problem at 70 or 80 because you're neglecting them and you're not really doing the maintenance right. So what are the common things that you see that are just absolutely people don't want to fix and then it causes them problems later? Well, before I answer that question, Dave, I want to back up for everybody to go back and maybe listen to last hey, week. Yeah, okay. Last week's show, because that's kind of the preface of, of what we're talking about, the deferred maintenance here and putting things off. Folks that haven't shopped for a new car in a while, oh, you know, yeah. we had the International Auto Show here uh, the Thanksgiving weekend. The price of cars are ridiculously high, and the number one, fi the the most popular term of financing is 84 months, and there's more subprime car loans out there than ever before. So you have got to take care of it. So that's where we're kind of – that's how this and, this conversation started. And yeah. there's, you know, 6 million Americans that are 90 days past due on their car loan. So yeah. that's not the people that are 60. 90 days past due on your car loan. So, like, you know, we can't afford to buy new cars, but we are apparently. Yeah. And, and we can't afford not to take care of our cars, but apparently we are because we're buying new cars that we can't afford because we didn't <laughs> take care of the last one. Yeah. So what – you know – we got to start thinking about differently. If you want to just be broke your whole entire life, just you know, buy a car, use it, abuse it, and get the next one. You well, know, it's not even a matter of being broke. You can be fairly financially well to do or middle class and live in you know whatever zip code you live in. That's just you know normal everyday average Joes. You're not you know we're not talking about uh, the the built more and the in the in whatever. But I see people. I have I have friends. I have. Workers in the past have made poor decisions all their life around cars, 
And they're poor. Be- I mean, they're not necessarily poor because of it. Ooh, and there's my Such big Such a seat. rookie. There's Such a, a rookie. There's thing. a rookie telephone call right there that just came in. But, um... Um, yeah, so, so yeah, there's a lot of that goes on. Well, I think of like when I see someone, the car comes in the shop. Hey, just so you know, you know your water pump is starting to leak. And it's not active right now. It's not down in your driveway, but there's stalactites forming below the water <laughs> right. pump or below the radiator. So when a radiator has a very small leak, it's not really leaking, but it's down maybe like half an inch or an inch inside that radiator. They got plastic tanks, and there's steam forming at the top of that. Mm-hmm top of that radiator and that steam is taking the plastic tank now and it's crystallizing it and then one day it just opens up and you know you blow a head gasket because you didn't have time to pull over yeah it creates it creates the weak link so Um, ignoring that kind of stuff is stuff you can't do you got to take leaks from your cooling system very seriously and i think the manufacturers to their detriment and to the detriment of the car owners are causing people not to do their oil changes when they should be. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, they're mar- there's a marketing department that's selling these cars, and you got to remember they're in the business to sell cars. They want you to buy a new car every three or four years. They also want to have low cost of ownership. So, I mean, my advice: five thousand to seventy five hundred miles maximum synthetic oil. Don't take that fifteen thousand mile suggestion mm-hmm. from Audi and Volkswagen and. And Volkswagen doesn't do it, but you know BMW and Mercedes, they're trying to sell you convenience. We know it's not always right. convenient to get to the shop, so that's nope. one thing, Dave. You know, um, you know, I don't think cooling systems get too badly overlooked in Arizona. People are pretty astute to that because of radiators. And you get a you get a blown head gasket in your parking lot. How many times in the summer? Well, we're talking about maintenance versus something well, that's deferred start, maintenance start and repair. repair. Yeah, you know, so like the cooling system, if you don't maintain it, you know. That, that can cause an issue. At the same time, too, I see people, you know, overly, un, you know, overly maintain it when they're doing bad maintenance. So that's a yeah. whole other topic for you. Um, what, what be proactive they, about taking care of your car. That's yeah. what. That, what well, I like especially when there's a failure. Now, it's one thing, like say we test your brake fluid, and some manufacturers say the brake fluid needs to be changed every two years. That that's mostly in your German categories. Some of the Americans and Japanese manufacturers are saying three and four years now. Um, Deferring a brake fluid service or flush, that's not going to really, you know, that's not really a big deal. But but deferring a, something like you said, the example of a water pump, that's not going to get any better. That's not going to fix itself. So, you know, the cynical side of people just say they just don't trust you. You mm-hmm. know, so they're going to say, oh, I'm not going to do it. I must not need it. And they're not going to believe it until they're broken down. So I think when somebody tells you something's broken and it's demonstrable that it's broken like a water pump leaking, the leak's not going to get better. No. Fix no. it before it leaves you broken. You no, know, um, we know the life cycle of these things. Hey, you know, 80 to 120,000 miles starting to have a water pump mm-hmm. issue. It's not going to go away. It's going to happen. Why not fix it before it's a major problem down the road? Another example is maybe a minor power steering leak. And leaks are something that I'm, we still constantly focus on. I know you, too, you do too, Dave, because what somebody calls a leak isn't really hitting the ground or isn't a leak. So when someone tells you you have a leak, you need to ask questions. Don't just say, ah, I don't see anything in my garage. You're, a bunch of, you know, you're not telling the truth. I'm not going there. Talk about that leak because... You could have a power steering leak that's just down a little bit. It's running down the hose. And all these cars are covered with protective shields. And mm-hmm. They want to make them really quiet going down the highway. Those shields, I don't know how many times we take a shield off and then all of a sudden we take a bath in oil. Well, the reason it's not dripping to the ground is because it's, <laughs> it's on, on the this, shield. It, it's on the shield. And then what happens? That fluid then runs out and maybe you, maybe you burn up the power steering pump because it's gone yep. too many mm. days. Or, you know, you start getting... Uh, you know, that petroleum product, what's it do to rubber? It swells it up, so you start destroying min- engine mounts and, and those kinds of well, things. Well, you know, the, the, the one thing that comes up all the time is batteries, okay? We test every battery that comes in the shop, all right? You pull it in, starts the car just fine. You know, you plug into the battery, and the battery tester says the battery's bad. Like, I don't know, it starts the car pretty good. You know, and this is where some debate comes up because it does start the car fine, but that battery test that we're using is predictive, and it's seeing a problem with the battery. And it's not today, but it may be tomorrow or a week from now, and you'll call people up and just say, hey, just so you know. And we don't say the tester says bad because that's that's a little bit too, it feels too objective when it starts the car. We just tell them, hey, it's on the weak side. So it's about 30 months old, so you're living on borrowed time. Just want to let you know about it. But ignoring the battery causes a whole bunch of other issues with the vehicle because, you know, when you plug your, uh, you know, your 
your appliance into the wrong outlet. You put it in the 220 line when it should be in the you know the 120 line. Something's going to go wrong. And, and with batteries being weak, it causes electrical issues. How many times are we replacing computers in cars now? It's a regular thing. There's so many modules and, and so much <laughs> electronics. <laughs> and as a result of the battery, you know, we talked last week about the start. No, battery's a perfect example. Start start uh, talking about the start-stop technology on cars. And you're hearing it now. You're sitting at the intersection with the windows down today. I guarantee you're going to hear it if you're driving there, whether it's some newer, two- or three-year-old newer cars. All of a sudden, you hear that when the light turns green, that car starts up right next to you. Like, why are they shutting their car off? It's doing that automatically. So now your car is not just starting in the morning and in the afternoon when you go to work. That car's starting 40 times a day. Hmm. And you get voltage spikes. We talked about that BMW I had yep. in my shop. where, And then they freaked out because it's a $500 battery. So you know, you're not driving your 1984 BMW anymore. You stepped up to the plate. There's a whole new round of technology. So when you're when you're thinking about that battery, that's something to think about. And interstate batteries is where you want to be looking. They've got the Megatron, the Megatron Plus. It doesn't matter. They've got a battery that fits your car. And the beauty is, just like the name, interstate. It's coast to coast. You can get it warrantied anywhere. Shops all across the country and all across this valley carry them, too. So if you're looking for a battery, try finding them at a bumper-to-bumper radio shop that you can find at bumper-to-bumperradio.com or interstatebatteries.com. We've got Tom and Michael and more open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You listen to Matt and Dave, your car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. There is nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock here for Kurt's Auto Repair. I brought my nephew and general manager, Jeff Rock, to help spread the word. Thanks, pups. Yep, the more things change, the more they stay the same at Kurt's. Family owned and operated, our ASE Master Techs and Family Ethics have earned us a perfect Better Business Bureau record for over 30 years. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell or online at mycarhertz.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. I just want to listen for a little bit. You know, I start to get my little smile on, tap my toe a little bit. Mm. You know, it's not. It's after Thanksgiving, so we can listen to this, and it's we're officially into the Christmas season. So I'm all for it, all for playing the tunes. You know, Tim at work's even got the got the thing going on. He's Mr. Christmas. So welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, Dave Riccio by my side. Talking about cars, we I mean, started off today talking about deferred maintenance and, and repairs and putting off things and how they can really come back and haunt you, and, and haunt you later. And, uh, you know, part of this was spurred by what we talked about last week, the expense of new cars. And, and we're not buying cars for 48 months or, or 60 months anymore, a lot of people. Oh, yeah. 84 months worth of financing. Mm-hmm. Seven years you're going to have this thing around. Take a look at your car right now and ask yourself how long you've had it and how what shape is it in today versus what it was when you got it seven years ago. And if it's not in really good shape, you guys, maybe it's time to start changing your tone because that next new car you buy, you guys better start rubbing your nickels together right now. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> because, sure. Uh, you know, but, and you don't have to go broke taking care of the car, though. That's no. the thing. You can be smart about it. The idea is to get to a shop, stay at the shop, let you know, develop that relationship, and you will get taken care of. So anything that you want to talk about, or maybe you're out car shopping on this Saturday morning. A lot of people are doing it. There's a lot of sales. We can help walk you through some of those questions. Uh, you got a bunch of lists of repairs. Dave, I had a gal yesterday going, gosh, do I really put $1,500 into my Subaru with 90,000 miles? Hell yeah, you do. That's a great car. <laughs> you fix it. So two six, or 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. It's easy. You call us. We help you. 
piece of cake. <laughs> For sure. And someone who made that call is Tom in Scottsdale. He's got a 2002 Chevrolet Avalanche. How can we help you, Tom, in your Avalanche? You listen to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, uh, two questions. Uh, so first, I bought the car. I'm the original owner of it, and uh, I've done my maintenance, and so it's been good to me. But uh, my problem has started uh, a year or two ago and was infrequent. It's throwing out an error code. The uh, P0332, which I think means uh, a knock sensor, and uh, the, it's throwing out that code more often, like every day now kind of thing, and I, you know, uh, get home at night and I disconnect the battery to reset it, and I can't even go a day now without it. So my, my question for you is, how serious is it? Can I just live with that, or do I need to drop the coin and uh, get that knock sensor replaced? Lots of options. Go for it. Yeah, is your is your check engine light is coming on when that knock sensor code is starting? Right. Well, the problem you're going to have because you're disconnecting the battery every day or every other day uh, to turn that light off is that you're going to lose all the adaptive memory in the system every time you do that. So the problem with the check engine light, it doesn't discriminate between a real, you know, you may have, oh, well, that's a knock sensor and uh, <clears throat> no big deal. Well, so when something else comes up, you're going to still think it's a knock sensor and you're going to unplug the battery. And again, we're not going to get the fuel efficiency we need. The transmission's not going to work as good as it needs to be. All those things because we're disconnecting the battery. So I don't like that idea. I know the knock sensors on that have an issue with the moisture on them and them corroding. And it's kind of, a, it's just a pattern failure. But it is something that should be fixed to make that, that engine operate like it needs to Let's operate. Let's back it up a little bit to what a knock sensor is. Everybody out there is going, hey, a knock sensor doorbell? I got a doorbell mm -hmm. on my car? What, what <laughs> are you right. talking about? No, the car doesn't have a doorbell. A knock is what... You know, you used to say, I got bad gas. Or you're driving up the hill, driving up the freeway, and it's going... Clattery. Rattle, or what we would call pinging. So years ago, the, with the fuel injection, the manufacturers put a sensor in there. That sensor can hear that, and it says, oh, something's not running right. So it's going to make an adjustment. It's going to retard the ignition timing. It may make a fuel adjustment. It's calculated into the computer. So Toyotas have a lot of problems with. You're seeing mm -hmm. the minivans, the V6s, the Avalons and stuff. A lot of Nissans have the code, but on the yeah. Nissans, it, a lot of people do ignore them. It doesn't turn on the check engine light, and it's not really used so much in the mapping and that thing, right? Right, right. They but come the, off the lot with that code in there. The Brand Nissans, new. there's a nice trick to fix that one, though. But the what we've found, the knock sensors code on a lot of the Chevy V8s, and you know where we find them the most? The guys who always get their car detailed, they do and they really wash good, the motor. and they wash the engine because it goes down that valley pan and it corrodes the uh, corrodes the wiring harness. So yeah, you want you're going to want to get that fixed. The car's going to run better. At some point, I bet you're going to have a leaky intake manifold gasket on that car, and that's the time to take care of it. So yeah, definitely definitely something to to work on. But eh, it's not going to kill you. You're not going to break down. But you want to keep the truck running great. Fix it. For sure. Thanks for the call, Tom. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Michael in Queen Creek. He's got a 2011 Ford F-150. How can we help you, Michael? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, the 2011 F-150. My blind doors are clicking, and I know, and I've Googled it, they're plastic gears in them. How much of a job is it to replace those because they've got the independent uh, climate control in the truck? They're just not fun in a lot of cases. So, you oh, know, and it depends on which one it is because there's, you know, blend doors, there's mode doors. Mode doors are going to go between defrost, dashboard, or down by your feet. Blend doors is going to mix the hot air and the cold air. You know, uh, some of these cars have six, you know, six of those inside the car. And so some of them are really easy to access and some of them are pull the dashboard out kind of thing. So uh, the specifics on that one as far as which one you have bad you know, and you can probably do a little diagnostic work if you're handy and you want to take this on yourself as far as identifying which one it actually is. For us, we can do it with the scanner. So we can actually just turn that door on or off and just kind of see which one it is. But it depends on how deep it is and how buried it is. Is to you know, I get really good at like sitting upside down in the driver's seat. You ever do that, Matt? Yeah, so you, you can... got your feet over the headrest, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then you get out of there, and there's big veins popping out of my forehead because my whole entire head is filled with, with blood. But, you know, and there's another way that you can kind of pinpoint that. I was in an infinity uh, yes yesterday or Thursday, and it's making the noise. So if you just sit and think for a minute and go, okay, AC's on, it's clicking. I'm on recirc, so I'm going to go ahead and push the fresh air button. 
Because that's one motor right there. That's one motor. Guess what? The noise went away. So that door is what's deciding whether your your air in the car is going to come from the outside or be re- recirculated from the inside like in the house. So now I'm like, okay, I know it's the recirc door clicking. Now the question is, where is it? Oh, that's the one that's on the way top. You're not messing with that one yourself. Right. That, that's tough. But even sometimes, you know, um, as a consumer, you need to understand you can't see that stuff. It's your best educated, experienced guess because it's not like he said. The motors go bad and the doors break. You don't know you have a broken door till you get in there. Mm-hmm. So sometimes this thing opens up. I mean, you've taken uh, some of these Dodge Ram 1500s that are uh, a little mature, you know, 10, mm-hmm. 12 years old. Yep. You can spend three grand fixing those uh, all those motors because the, the doors break. And you don't buy a door. You buy an entire housing. And then, heck, while you're in there, why aren't you changing out the heater core? That's might, as, might as well. <laughs> you know and by I mean? the way, if you're, if you're paying to get a heater core fix in your Tahoe or something, don't just stop by the shop when they have your dashboard out because you'll never trust that car again. <laughs> I mean, we're really good about getting it all back together. But when you see your dashboard laying on the, on the shop floor with a, you know, some rags underneath it and you go look and you're like, that, wow. You know what the better one is? There's like a Facebook group for auto shop owners. And a lot of guys like to post pictures. Look what we look at this car. I mean, and it's like that whole dash. I'm like, oh my! I get maybe you're taking pictures to document. If a customer ever sees that, every rattle that car ever has. Oh, you're gonna own it right there. Yeah. So yeah, when you think, oh, it's just a small rattle. Can you guys take care of that? It may be a small rattle, but it may be at the back of that dashboard, and, and, mm, and you may just turn the radio up and, and fix that one. I know most technicians. I won't do dash work. Oh, I don't do dash work like that anymore. When I was a tech, though, summertime, I am not doing it. Right, yeah. It's too hot. We're not doing it. That's a fall or spring job. Anyhow, when we come back, we've got Steve, Cynthia, Dennis, and we're time for more phone calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTAR car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Some say one of the worst sounds you can hear is a car crash. Yes, and all the stress that goes with that can be worse. The accident is stressful enough. The repair process doesn't have to be. Hi, this is Kevin, Dave, and Leo, and we're the collision team at Bumper to Bumper Radio. Individually, we own Campus Body Salon, I-17 Collision, and First Class Auto Body. Together, we're an unbeatable team working for you, not the insurance company, to get your job done right. Check us out at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed. Not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection. They do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Goodworks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Goodworks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. KTAR News Time is 1130. I'm Julie Levin. 
Congress is one step closer to creating a new kind of alert system for missing people who are too old for an amber alert and too young for a silver alert. Designed for missing or endangered adults between the ages of 18 and 64, the Ashanti Alert Act would create a federal system that would notify the public through radio and TV and try to help police in their search. It is now past the Senate. Virginia Senator Mark Warner. It will go back to the House with the hope being that before the end of this calendar year, uh, the president will sign this. It's named for Ashanti Billy, a 19-year-old woman who was abducted in Virginia last year. She was found dead 11 days later in North Carolina. Nick Ainelli, ABC News, Washington. In a packed high school auditorium, funeral services were held for Hannah Aguilar today. Her family speaking to the crowd. We are not here to say goodbye to Hanya, but to say until later. 13-year-old Hanya was kidnapped on November 5th and later found dead. Let's get a check now on our traffic and weather. In the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center, it's Mike Daniels. Thank you, Julie. I-10 westbound, Alvernon Way. That rollover crash still blocking the off-ramp. We do have an injury accident involving a motorcycle on Bell Road westbound, just west of Central, and a crash at 67th Avenue and Thomas. This report sponsored by Ace. Christmas is better when you wrap it in red. Stop by your neighborhood Ace for gifts from best brands like Weber, Craftsman, DeWalt, Traeger, Yeti, and more. Only at Ace, the helpful place. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. KTR weather for the valley today, mostly sunny. 68 is the high tonight. It's going to be clear. It's going to drop down to 47. Tomorrow, more sunshine, 71, 50 later that day. Monday, partial sunshine. It's going to hit 72, one of the highs of the week. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Weather, replace, or repair called Howard Air. 60 degrees in Sun City. I'm Julie Levin on Arizona's news station, KTR News. KTAR News, winner of three Edward R. Murrow Awards this year for excellence in journalism and breaking news coverage. Because real news matters now more than ever. KTAR News, 92.3 FM, Arizona's news station. Trust. They say it takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. It doesn't come easy, and you have to earn it every day to stay in business, right? Hi. Dave Riccio from Tri-City Transmission and co-host of Bumper to Bumper Radio. As Arizona's oldest and most trusted transmission shop, we are determined to keep building on a reputation that we've worked hard to earn by doing the right thing every time for our customers. Yes, honesty is our policy, but we go a step further and back it up with experience and the expertise to be able to give you comfort to know that if you are going to have to spend money on a transmission, that A, you actually need it, and B, that it's done by the most qualified experts at a fair price. I guarantee it. Tri-City Transmission, handcrafted since 1972. Go where friends trust to send their friends. Check us out online at tricitytransmission.com. That's tricitytransmission.com. Tricitytransmission.com. Ho, 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 and happy holidays! Bunker to Bunker, the golf show, invites you to celebrate the season at our annual Toys for Tots two-person scramble tournament at the Trilogy Golf Club at Vistancia. Join us Saturday, December 15th for golf, prizes, barbecue, lunch, and after party, all for just $96 when you bring an unwrapped toy for the kids. Remember, bring a toy and Santa stuffs your stocking with a coupon for another round of golf. Space is limited, so don't miss out on our last event of the year. Register today at BunkerGolf.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. That's our closing line, Pops. I know, Jeff. Just reinforcing that we're full service auto repair. At Kurtz Auto Repair, we do it all, including diesel. We have the passion, training, equipment, and expertise for diesel. Our techs are ASC certified for diesel and advanced diesel diagnostics. Toy hauling, horse trailering, off-roading, or work trucking, we've got you covered. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Check us out at mycarhurts.com. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that will help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're helping you with your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And for those of you who have never tuned in, let me tell you about the show. The show is about you and your car and helping you out and putting you in the know so that when you do have a car issue, it doesn't feel all foreign and create a bunch of anxiety. 
The other thing the show is, it's a show that's sponsored by Good Auto Repair Shops here in the Valley, and you can find them at a website called BumperToBumperRadio.com. If you're one of those customers who just goes here because I got a coupon, or here because I got a coupon, or here because it's just convenient, and you don't really have a relationship with a shop, you're just an orphan customer, we encourage you to go make a relationship. If you don't even know where to start, a safe place to go is Bumper to Bumper Radio. Like our, our, our promo used to say, it's your warm, comfy blanket when it comes to auto repair, which is cheesy as heck, but it's still, it's still out there somewhere. So anyway, we've got Kim, we got Frank, we got Steve and Dennis, but we're going to go with Cynthia in Tempe. She's got a 2009 Ford Flex. How can we help you, Cynthia? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was calling, so this morning when I started my vehicle for the first time and shifted in second gear, it had like a hard shift, like it felt like it kind of kicked me in the butt. Um, I know that I do have a small transmission leak, like a very small, maybe leaves half dollar size um, on the ground. So I do know that there's something there, but I'm just wondering if officially to the point of uh, replacement, if it's something else I should be concerned about. Yeah, I think. Uh, hey, wait, 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 hold on. I was going to talk about Dave. We went from having a dollar a size transmission leak to replacing the transmission in, right, t- right. in two sentences. <laughs> Cynthia, pump the brakes a little bit. Pump yeah, the brakes. slow way down. <laughs> slow it down. This phone call, we get it all the time at my shop. People call up, I need to know how much for a transmission in my car, you know, and, and uh, what's going on with it, you know, and it's it, it so many times is not the transmission. Yeah, be careful. You go to a transmission shop and say, you think you need a transmission? They're going to sell you on you're some gonna, of these places. Some places you're going to get one. Yeah. Because that's what they sell. I mean, you right. go to the ice cream store looking for a candy, for an ice cream bar, you're getting one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you'll be glad to know the last time we had to have a tra- transmission replaced in a vehicle, we went to Tri-City. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm blushing. So, yeah. So, uh, but it just just it just happened so far this once and this morning, correct? You correct. Haven't, you correct. Haven't really it only it? like as soon as the car was warmed up, it did it twice. So the first time it shifted, in the second was kind of like a big clunk, and like a big kick in the butt, and then the second one not so bad, and then it stopped altogether. And it didn't do it in any other like shifting to third or fourth or anything else. And it's an automatic. How, m- how many miles are on it? Uh, I'm at about 155. 155. Okay. Well, I'm going to suggest that we no longer ignore the leak, okay? Make yeah. an appointment. Uh, if it's just most leaks are, are pretty small. It may not be anything major at all. You know, it may be at the transmission shop two to three days. You know, day one, maybe wash it, clean it, identify where the leak is, recreate the leak. Day two, fix the little leak and double check everything and get it back, you know, for the next day. But, you know, when you're talking about something like this, the modern transmission is super electronic. So, you know, we were talking about batteries earlier. I have people come to me and they have this this transmission problem first thing in the morning because they got a weak battery. You know, you start the car in the morning and it drains some juice out of the battery. And I'm not saying that's what you've got going on. But what I'm saying is it may just be something minor. But also, just a one-time event, I'm not really getting super excited about it. You know, a transmission will shift 200 times between here and the other side of town. And if you really think about it, only 95% of those shifts were perfect, if you know what I know, uh, because transmissions aren't perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you thinking? I'm just Your thinking, face is pregnant just, with thought, I'm so just, I want to know what's just, going on. Uh, just uh, thinking about, you know. But for everyone that's out there, too, and if, if this leak's been going on for a little bit, you know, that transmission holds 10, 11 quarts, but it only takes about a quart, a quart and a half to really start to cause an issue. So if it's been that little dollar size, you know, silver dollar size thing going on for a little while, maybe it is low. So, yeah, it starts to add up. And those, that's one of the things that, you know, some people are just nervous to get in, you know, they don't want to, it's like, you know, I got a toothache. The last thing I want to do is go to the dentist. I got this guy jamming mm-hmm. his needle. And, and it's just that emotional bank account is Cynthia knows she has a problem, but she just does you know, I just don't want to go to the shop. But think of that tooth. She's that you, afraid she needs a transmission. Yeah, but think of that tooth you ignored for a while. Well, and then, then one day it got really intense well, and you're like, Oh, I should have called and, this guy like two months ago. And that's what I'm getting at. We started the show about talking about deferred maintenance and not you know, like that, that water pump that's just starting to leak. Well that that silver dollar size of transmission leak, it may have nothing to do with your problem. But 
those exasperate, and that's what turns into a transmission. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. You avoid buying a transmission, and I know it's painful. I know you don't want to go to the shop. I mean, there's things that I ignore all the time, too. Uh, heck, look at my car half the time. It's not, I don't even want to you know, expose it to the text because I know I'm going to have to spend some money on it. I, uh, I had one this week. I made somebody's Christmas. They called up, and they said, hey, we need a transmission in our truck. How much? You know? I said, well, I don't know. We've got to check it out. Let's see what's going on with it. No, no, really, we need to know how much. We've been saving up a lot. Long time the truck's been set aside because we know it needs a transmission how much i said well my answer isn't different bring it on in let's check it out well guess what 250 bucks a speed sensor and repair the wiring down to the speed sensor and that was it but they had saved up two three thousand bucks to fix the transmission now they got two three thousand bucks for christmas if they want <laughs> or put savings or you know or catch up on the but that family. lady was adamant about getting uh -huh. you know like just just get it over with i just want to know the pain of what this is going to cost me and so but again like your point if you go to an ice cream shop and it's not you know <laughs> you go to a transmission shop that's in the business of just selling trannies and everybody gets a tranny uh, you know you got to be careful i had a guy that drove all the way to the shop he's a radio listener from fountain hills he heard us talking about really test driving cars and how you have to do that. He's had this problem on the Suburban. He loves his Suburban. 180,000 miles on it. He's never going to get rid of it. And this thing has been maintained to the T. He went to the dealer. He went to another shop. I mean, he was pretty religious about where he went at first, but then he's got this noise. They're throwing money at this, throwing money at that. And he's like, oh, my God, I just... I just know I'm going to need, and he's, you know, now he's already buying a rear differential <laughs> housing and all this stuff. I mean, this this dude signed it up for thirty five hundred bucks. You know, he's about ready to go to the differential shop. I called him up. I said, "Hey, Jim, or whatever his name was." I said, uh, "Would you be happy if I told you we got your car fixed for a grand?" Oh, yeah, hell, hell, yeah, that, that'd be great. I said, "Well, I would make your day. It's going to be four hundred twenty bucks. It's fixed. <laughs> your emergency brake shoe fell apart. It was making a funny grinding noise." Mm -hmm. Some other shop tried this. They drove around the block, said, "Up, oh, it's in the rear end." Oh and, yeah, and uh, that's what it is. You're going to need a rear end. So he was he was convinced he needed a three thousand. A parking lot diagnosis or uh, a quote over the phone is like your biggest enemy. You know what I'm saying? Because that guy, if he went to the wrong place again, oh sure, yeah, we'll get you different. Differential, you got three thousand bucks to spend. Well, guess what? It's only three thousand and one dollars, so you're in luck. Yeah, we had hey, twenty nine. <laughs> we can get the rest of it out of the change in your ashtray, so we're in good shape. So anyway, <laughs> we got to get with Steven Scottsdale. He's got a 2014 Audi S4. How can we help you, Steve? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, hello, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. I originally dropped off my car for a regular oil change at my trusted mechanic, and they said that I need. All four front suspension, upper control arm bushings replaced. Uh, I need front brakes. Uh, I don't have a history on the car. I bought it at 25,000 miles, so I don't know about the brakes. But should the bushings be going out at 25,000 miles? And if they're going to tear apart, you know, both left and right front, anything else I should do? And I also saw mention of performance bushings and control arms. So I'm kind of curious what I should do. I'd stay away from this. Is Matt, Steve? I'd stay away from the performance bushings a little bit. How many miles did you say on this car? It's slightly under forty-five thousand. Forty-five. You've owned it about twenty. Correct. Um, there, the Audis have in Volkswagen. They have a, I won't say complicated, but a very um, eccentric maybe. Or there's lots of wishbones and arms, and I think there's eight or ten different arms in there, and each one of them has a bushing on the end of it or a ball joint. I see bushings oversold all the time. Mm -hmm. um, they get a lot of cracks in them. Um, sometimes they break. Now, you take, a, I'm going to shift gears over to a BMW. There's a common bushing, control arm bushing that, that fails. And you can actually hang your head out the window and back up about, you know, just idle speed and hit the brake. And you'll see the whole wheel shift. Mm -hmm. The wheel stops, the car moves. And you can do the same thing going forward. Short of you having a symptom off of that, I would be looking for a second opinion. Um, or I would be asking that shop, please show me. Mm -hmm. um, those bushings do break. And in some cases, you can buy the kit. We used to do a ton of these. You buy a kit. It's got all the arms, all the bushings, and you just replace the whole darn thing. Sometimes it's worth just pulling down, and you can press a new bushing in and out. That can be a very expensive repair, Steve. So it, it's worth 
get in a second opinion and make it. And you called them your trusty shop. I'm assuming that wasn't in sarcasm. That's your your regular place. They'd be happy to show you. Yeah, I think you said put, put it, it up, up in the air and show demonstrate. We had a gal with a really nice, a supercharged uh, A6, you know, V6, nice car. She had some of them. I think four out of eight of them were were really broken. So we we're trying to help her decide: Do you want to do all of them? Should we just replace? And so that's a conversation you have to have. You can't just say, "Do it all." You know. Yeah, for sure. And in the second part of his question was, uh, well, you know, there's aftermarket, there's performance oh, yeah, yeah. bushings. Listen, unless you're taking this thing out to the track and you're gonna you're gonna be, uh, you know. Uh, raking it pretty hard. I'm just not a big fan of aftermarket stuff. I see some cars destroyed one aftermarket part at a time. Uh, you know, so it depends on, you know, I mean, Audi did all their engineering, you know. Yeah. In a, Steve, you or me or it, most people listening are not enough of a skilled performance driver to notice the difference that the bushings might pick up. But you are skilled enough to know as a daily driver they're going to put a polyurethane mm-hmm. bushing in there. Everything they're bricks, man. On that car will rattle. It will be a rougher ride. You won't be happy with this. If it's your daily driver and you like to commute with it, and but it's still your nice little, I mean, hey, an S4 is a pretty bad car. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. them. It's a fun car. Don't screw it up. Keep Maintain the drivability in that car by leaving it uh, leaving it stock as far as that the bushings go, I think. For sure. When we come back, we've got Kim, we've got Frank, we've got Jesse and Dennis. We'll be right back. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. What's the right call after a car accident? Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Auto Body Salon. I invite you to check us out online and see why so many people have made us their first call following their accident. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved, five-star rated with Yelp and CarWise.com, and A-plus rated by the BBB. Make your first call the right call to Campus Auto Body Salon. Check us out online at CampusBodySalon.com. Serving the Valley since 1973, Campus Auto Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Trust, it's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Honesty and integrity. It's the only option. Hi, Spencer Doucet for H&I Automotive. H is for honesty and I is for integrity. We built our business on these two principles. Hi, this is Danny Grant. And I'm Paul Garcia. We're Spencer's business partners. Originally, we were customers that were referred by friends to check out this great shop in Mesa. We saw for ourselves how special the experience was at H&I. Yep, we went from raving fans to good friends to enthusiastic partners when Spencer was looking to expand his business to the East Valley. Thanks, guys. The overwhelming support from our customers, families, and partners has allowed us to celebrate the opening of our second, brand-new, state-of-the-art location in Gilbert. Two locations, same principles. Quality service at a great value that you can count on for all your automotive needs. Backed with an industry-leading, 60-month, 60,000-mile parts and labor warranty. We invite you to check us out at hniautomotive.com. Second best, I prefer spring. I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer. <laughs> Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're helping you get ready for Christmas. At some point, we're going to have the top ten Christmas gifts for the, the mechanic in your life. Uh, so maybe that's coming up next week. Maybe we'll make it to the top 11. All right. Top top 11. You know, <laughs> the happiest time of year, right? Is that, what, is that what the song said? The best time of year? The jolliest time of year? Tax time. I love it. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine was, I saw him on Facebook last week, and he's like, oh, I'm at the Disneyland, and I commented the most miserable place on earth. And he sends me a message. He's like, amen. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> like, I mean, I had fun taking the kids there, but at the end of the day, you're like, oh, good Lord, what did I do? Yep, for sure. 
sure. Well, let's go with Kim in Gilbert. She's got a 2003 Honda Accord. How can we help you, Kim? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Thank you, too. Um, I had I took my car in. It's been serviced. It, well, it's a one owner, and it's been serviced regularly, like every 3,000 miles with synthetic. But um, the shop told me that the transmission fluid was starting to look lacquered, I think he said. Okay. And my concern is I'm, I'm worried to, to change the fluid. I mean, what, what's your advice? The car's got 237,000 miles on it. Yeah, Kim, is it a four-cylinder V6? It's a V6. A V6. Okay, and, you, and you're the original owner of it? Well, my parents were. They got it with 100 miles on it, so I know the whole history of the car, and it's just it drives like a new car. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. That transmission is done really well, considering that's right in the kind of the, the the mid you know the middle point of when Honda had all their transmission issues. But at some point, oil or transmission fluid loses its oiliness, its ability to lubricate. So if you don't do anything with it, yeah, your transmission will go go bad. You know. So if you do do something with it, you've got better odds. And on a on a Honda Accord, if you just want to do a drain and fill, it's it's an eight nine quart system. Just do a drain and fill. It'll change out three quarts, and maybe on the next oil change, do another drain and fill. It's yeah. not super expensive to do it that way, and it's a non invasive way to just get you know p- put the additives back in that oil that have worn out. Yeah. And so just, I would. Yeah, that was my concern because I know that that a lot of these transmission fluids have a lot maybe more detergent in them, and I was just worried about it. Come, you know. Don't fix it if it's not nah. broke kind of thing, you know? Yeah, don't fix it if not broke, but in this, it's just a maintenance thing. We just know we've got oil in there, and, and really we say the oil has been varnished. Well, it's turned old. Don't fix it oh, it's, Don't fix it when it's not broke, but maintain it so it don't come broke. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> so what I tell, it sounds like it sounds like you've got a shop that you take it to. When you go in there, say, I just want to do a drain and fill service on it. So, again, it's an eight-quart system, nine-quart system. You do a drain and fill, you're going to... You know, literally, there's a drain plug like your engine. Three quarts are going to come out of it, even though the whole system holds nine. But that's okay. You just replenish it with three quarts, and the next oil change we're in, do the same thing. And it's just a very non-invasive way to get that fluid changed out without really disturbing the chemistry too much. Yeah, and now on that one, too, there's a lot of people that do transmission flushes. No flush on that one. Don't. There's, there's You can't even flush it. And, Dave... I would use Honda transmission. I would fluid. use Honda transmission fluid too, so, like out of a Honda bottle. You yeah, know. yeah. And, and again, that doesn't mean go to the Honda dealer. But when mm-hmm. you make your appointment, just tell them, tell them, God, tell your service advisor. <laughs> I think we got more Honda fluid in my shop than the Honda yeah, dealer. Don't, does. I don't want the universal <laughs> fluid. It's a few bucks more, but I'll just take the Honda fluid, please. Thank you very much, and, and I think you'll be in great shape. For sure. Thanks for the call, Kim. We're going to go with Frank in Mesa. He has an 01 Isuzu Trooper. Uh, go ahead, Frank. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, you recommend a uh, transmission diagnosis from one of your uh, vendors, and uh, this transmission has no dipstick in it, and it's never been serviced since I had it, and uh, I needed to get something looked at. Frank, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if the transmission's working fine and, and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, you don't have any symptoms, it should absolutely be serviced. You never want to do a service just to try to fix a problem. No. Uh, but you're right. We've got one transmission shop on the bumper to bumper radio list, and that's because they're the best one. And they're right in your neighborhood. Tri City Transmission. It's Tri City because it's Scottsdale, Phoenix, Tempe, right on the border of all that, right over there by uh, Tempe Marketplace. So you can find them at bumper to bumper radio dot com, or just right. go- or just Google Tri City Trans. Dot com, you'll find them, make an appointment, not a big deal. They can take care of that for you. For sure. We have a very patient Dennis in Phoenix. He's got a 2017 Chevrolet Malibu. How can we help you, Dennis? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, I got a question. I had a uh, low leak or slow leak in my driver's side front wheel, and I took it into a well-known tire company, and they found a nail in it. But the uh, technician there also changed the uh, valve stem out. And I was thinking, now, don't the low-pressure indicators work with the valve stem? Yeah, there's there's a couple styles, but most of the new stuff, the TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System, they are built into the valve stem. I don't know that they necessarily change it. Sometimes they'll go ahead and change the gaskets or O-rings around that valve stem. Yeah, there's a couple ways. There's a rebuild kit. So you can look at your car. And there's basically th- there's four different ways. We'll dig into this a little bit. I think we got some time. There's four different ways you have tire pressure monitoring systems. On my wife's car, for example, 
it's watching the rolling diameter of each wheel. So if you have one tire that's flat, that's going to spin more times than every other one in the same distance traveled. That's what triggers her low tire light. There's some that still have a rubber valve stem, but it's got copper in, or a stem in the middle, and it will screw to the sensor on the inside, so you can still replace just the rubber. Or there's the whole aluminum. You can see the aluminum sticking out. That's part of the sensor, and you can do a rebuild kit. And then there's a fourth type where the sensor itself is on a metal strap, and it's strapped just to the inside of the wheel, and then you would replace just the rubber valve stem. So, yeah, completely normal. I actually went through that this week. I bought four new tires. I went out to S&S Tire. You know, we know S&S, been by their shops, and great, great family that runs that business. I drove all the way out there, and I tell you what, I was not disappointed. I got a set of Michelins for my wife's car. My wife's been driving around with the tire pressure light on, and I'm like, ah, oh, just swing by, honey. We'll just keep topping it off, topping off. So talk about deferred maintenance. I'm like the number one guy for that because the shoemaker's kids go without shoes. But uh, I went out to S&S Tire, and it was an awesome experience. And, uh, and so, you know, it's like we think of the big name around town as fire tire shops go. But these guys were every bit as competitive, not more so competitive, but I got that family feel from the tire shop. I mean, literally, you know, Rob greeted me. Dan came by. His son came by. I mean, everyone in there, and they've, the employees have been there for a long time, you know, and I like – I like the family style auto repair and the the family style tire shops. It was super cool, and uh, we did have that conversation. And so they went ahead and just redid my valve stems just as a as, as a part of the deal. Yeah, so no, yeah, and they have to. That's what I mean. They don't have to, but because they're doing the job right. That's the bottom line. It's the little valve stem real suitcase, okay. and you know, and you can't just go with your wrench and tighten that up. We have a little torque wrench. It's mm-hmm. like two Newton meters or something. I mean, what the heck's a Newton meter anyway? <laughs> but, you know, but but you barely tighten them down. So there's, you know, my wife wants to help me paint the garage. And I said, you know, like you always say, Dave, let the painter do it. We right. can do it. <laughs> but it's going to look a lot better when the painter does it. You know what I mean? You say the analogy of uh, of laying tile. Yeah, oh. the tile guy's going to do I can lay a tile, but not as good as a tile guy. Do a heck of a lot better of a job. When I'm done with it, the grout line is not going to line up with the wall, and it's always going to bother me. But the the tile guy, no wall is really true. He's going to know how to make it look true. I want to tell a quick story. We're getting getting close on time, but I had a customer that wasn't very happy with me last week. Instead of going online and writing this nasty review, he did the adult thing. He wrote me an email, and he told me his concerns. And we talked back. I sent him an email back. We explained it. I brought perspective into it. Talked to him about why things happened the way they did and why certain things happened. And guess what happened? It's all great. He didn't have to write a bad review. He's happy. We're looking forward to working together again. So if you have one of those situations with your shop, communicate. Just don't be a keyboard warrior and go write a nasty story. And that's a great way to get good auto repair and have great relationships. We will see you next week.